I was born in a Dublin street where the loyal drums did beat and the loving English feet they grunt all over us. And every single night that me father came home tight, he'd invite the neighbors outside of this court. Come out, Jibbalek and Pan, come out and fight me like a man. Show your white power, you want nettles down and flanders. Now I'll the IRA, made to run like hell away from the green and lovely lanes and killers. Come let me hear you tell how you slammed the brave Parnell when you taught them well and truly persecuted. Where are the sneers and jeers that you bravely let us hear when our leaders of 16 were executed? Come out, you black and tan, come out and fight me like a man. Show your white how you want medals down in Flanders. Now how the IRA made you run like hell away from the green and lovely lanes and pillage Shamba. Alan Larkin and O'Brien, how you bravely call them swine. Robert and the two you hung and threw and quartered. I upon the scaffold high, how you murdered Henry Joy. And our proppy boys in Wexford, you did slaughter. Come out, take a like and pan, come out and fight me like a man. Joy, a white power, you want medals down and flanders. Ah, how the IRA made you run like hell away from the green of the lanes of Kalisha. Well, the day is coming fast and the time is nearly past When each journey will be cast aside before us And if there be a need, then we kids will say Godspeed With a bar or two of Stephen Bins for us Come out, Jibble, I can pan, come out and fight me like a man Show your white power, you want medals down in Flanders Now our hell, the IRA, made it run like hell away From the green of the lanes of Kalisha Friends' heart would still remain. At night we'd walk, laugh and joke, and sing a rebel song. But on you, the path we chose will be difficult and long. And Brendan Hughes still guards the bonds with rifle in his hand. He stands on top of the Cooley Hills and guards his native land. The Republic was his battle cry, a rebel to the last. The dogs will not be above the cause, said the warrior from West Belfast. No prison bars could hold. And wanted to be free. He left behind Cashada and took his liberty. When the wardens came to check his cell, they stood and looked aghast. For all knew he'd work to do, the warrior from West Belfast. And Brendan Hughes still guards the falls with rifle in his hand. He stands on top of the Cooney Hills and guards his native land. The Republic was his battle cry, a rebel to the last. The dogs will not. To understand what happened in the curfew, I think you have to understand two things. One, 
the location of what's known as the Lower Falls and the Lower Falls Park in Fleet Street. And it encompassed Albert Street, Convey Road, Grovney Road, Falls Road, Dumble Park. That small area, that's what we're talking about here is the Lower Falls. When, when the British Army came in, done their raid, pulled out, uh, Charlie Hughes ordered the people in the area, the local unit, his local unit, to, to stand by, uh, and they were all sent to the house. And what does that mean, stand by? It means, uh, in, in them terms, in Republican terms, stand by that there's something, something's going to happen. And when the standby is called, the standby house is sent out, an address is sent out for people to go to. So the, the 12 men assembled uh, at the house, uh, uh, first of all in, in Gleason Street, and then actually in Charlie Hughes's house in, in uh, Surrey Street. And the QM was sent for. And what weapons they were, in, were in dumps were taken out of dumps and oiled and getting put ready for use. So in the standby house, all this takes place. Mm -hmm. What would have been the, the quality of those weapons? Uh, not a, they, were, they were all Second World War weapons. It was, it was one carbine, a 303, a couple of weapons, a couple of Colts, uh, a Snazer, and an old uh, Sten, Sten submachine gun. All in all, there, there was uh, nine weapons. And some, some of the people actually went out just with nail bombs and blast bombs. That was later on. Er, earlier on, all during the day, the, these weapons were out. And right along Raglan Street, Sultan Street, there's a constant boom of the blast bombs, the nail bombs going off. Staying the, the, the type of war that was going on over that, over that period, not just over that day, but for the years to come afterwards, uh, without the support of the people in that area, without the active support of the people in that area. Uh, and you're talking about people here in 1870, who had no military training. They were picking their, their training up and their experience up uh, as they are, by the hour, never mind by the day or by the week, but they are. The helicopter then he came around and announced the curfew. Uh, there, there's, there was a lot of fear came in then because the order again went out uh, to call back to the stand, standby it's house. an IRA order went out. It's an IRA order went out for, for, for the troops, the IRA troops to go back to the standby house. Uh, and bring whatever weapons they could. And they all arrived back to Charlie Hughes's house in Serby Street. And the helicopter was flying around. The noise on the outside was getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. Uh, people began to head indoors. And there was an airy silence came, came about the area. Uh, except for the helicopter, the weighing of the helicopter, and the uh, announcement that there's a curfew and anybody on the streets would be shot. And I think it's an important point we made here as well. We heard a lot about shoot to kill, shoot to kill. Shoot to kill started in 1970 uh, during the curfew. Anybody seen on the streets uh, on the night of the curfew and before the curfew would have been shot dead. Uh, and I don't think it's been, it's been taken up enough. Right? That shoot to kill was actually there from the day and all the troops come onto our streets. And certainly I believe that, that that's when the shoot to kill policy started in Ireland, right? with, with this phase. His picture flashed around the world, spoke more than words can tell. No speeding bullet or long slow death could Brendan's spirit cast. For courage was the watchword of the warrior from West Belfast. And Brendan Hughes still guards the vaults. Rifle in his hand, he stands on top of the coolie hills and guards his native land. The public was his battle cry, a rebel to the last. The dogs will not give up the cause, said the warrior from West Belfast. So we sing a song for Brandon. The, the field that I was in, 
along with Gary, with, with a more secure PH, PH6, um, which I had more security on. And the bin lorry that, that, that we thought was a possibility of an escape on did not come in to PH6, and did, not, did not come as close to PH6. Um, so the stuff had to be carried from PH6 over to the bin lorry. I went about half past nine. Um, there was people there waiting, ready, waiting on me coming. Uh, they had a canvas bag. They had it filled with, with sawdust, dirt, the general dirt lying about the, the page was filled, filled with it. Uh, I got into the bag. Um, they, they tied it up. I had a pen knife with me. Um, I had an orange stuck in my mouth for, for, for fluid and so forth. Uh, I had money and I had the equipment to start a car, lift the bonnet and start a car for a quick start. We were heading out the gate, out the main gate of the prison. Now, normally, what, what was supposed to happen was that once the lorry got to the main gate, two squaddies, two British soldiers, would ram it with, with a spike, you know, with a big long bamboo thing with a spike on it. And I had been told from our intelligence people this no longer happened. When we got to the main gate, uh, it stopped. I heard the, the soldiers talking, and I felt the, the thing being pushed, pushed up the wagon. Uh, it, was a, it was a large lorry, uh, four sides on it, with a big canvas over the top. Uh, and I knew exactly what was going on. Uh, I heard and felt the thing coming up, and I was almost at the point of shouting, hold it, hold it, it's on the end. <laughs> I said, and I spotted it out. They got twice. They rambled twice, and they missed me twice. Right? So once that happened, I heard them saying, that's it's OK, go ahead. Yes, a comrade staunch and brave, unbowed and unbroken, through life and to his grave. His remains brought back to the mountains by friends who knew him best. They're in the glens, the fields and fence, they let him down to rest. And Brennan Q still guards the halls with rifle in his hand. He stands on top of the Cooley Hills and guards his native land. The Republic was his battle cry, a rebel to the last. Let us sing a prisoner's anthem. Let it echo through the cells all along the halls and landings. Let our hearts and voices swell. This will not give up the cause, said the warrior from West Belfast. This is what the, what the British have named the peace war. What, what they say it is here for is to keep the two warring factions apart. Uh, the loyalists are on this side, the Republicans on this side. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't stop the attacks constantly. Again, these houses are under attack. Not just petrol bombs and paint are, are thrown. Often, 
um, the UVF, the UVA, would open up with automatic fire, like here, a bullet hole coming through. Uh, the walls here littered with, with pack marks of bullets. Uh, someday, hopefully, and it's my belief and my desire, that this wall will be taken away. We no longer have bullet holes, we no longer have pack marks, we no longer have people living under attack. Uh, with constant fear, every single night, uh, of being attacked. The, the British would tell us that the loyalists are responsible for attacking Republican houses and Republicans responsible for attacking loyalists. Uh, the truth of the matter is that this wall symbolizes the British presence in Ireland, a division. They are the people responsible for this wall. They built it. They built the mentality that creates people on the other side to attack people on this side. The British presence, that is it. Brick walls, bullet holes, pockmarks, people living in fear.